When? Now. Ladies, gentlemen, and monsters of all ages, the time for hunting is now with Monster Hunter Now. And as we all begin our journey with the global release of the game now past us, there are a few different ways you can really enhance your journey in the game. Most people would say that the real fun of a Monster Hunter game is once you get out of the low rank sort of start experience and start to experience the full roster held within the game. And well, there is absolutely reason to believe that this will be the case in this game too. After all, fights are far too easy right at the start of this. And after you start to gain some Hunter ranks, you'll start to feel a little bit awkward while you're creating some gear and all those types of things, not to mention that not only do you not even gain access to every weapon in the game until around Hunter rank 15, depending on story progress, but you also can't actually hunt every monster that's available in the game either until you get far enough in the actual story progression of the game. On top of that, even the ones that you do have unlocked, the monsters, get bigger, greater movesets every few star levels, with the first jump at four stars to really change things up, so the game does dramatically change as you progress. Your experience will become better as you get further in and as such you may well be of the mind that you want to progress as quickly as possible to reach these points. And so today is just going to be a nice handful of tips to really speed up your grind in Monster Hunter Now. First and foremost, referral codes and friends. If you are watching this video, you have access to a community to play this game with, whether you realize it or not. This is my referral code. If you use this when you start playing, when you get to HR6, both you and me get a small pile of items as a reward. If you have friends starting to play, send them your referral code. Get referral codes from your friends. You don't have to use mine, it's just good for everyone. Everyone gets bonus items, there's simply no negative to using each other to spawn new items into both of your inventories. On top of that, friends matter. In this game you will eventually just come across hunts that feel too hard to do on your own. If you have a nice friends list built up, you can always look for help, or you can look for help from players nearby. Essentially just never forget that you don't actually have to hunt alone, and we've got a discord in the description of this video that you can join for look for people to hunt with as well. Second up are daily quests, and this one is really big. Regular hunts reward 10 zenny and 10 10 hunter rank points per star rating of the hunt, which is really quite pathetic progress if you just hunt random monsters with no actual goal in mind. Of course, story quests give lots of hunter rank points, but every day, resetting at midnight, you also get access to a new set of three daily quests once you've unlocked them. Each of these gives you a ton of zenny and a ton of hunter rank points for completion, and most often they are sort of just background objectives like hunt a specific monster or hunt with a specific weapon, so you can double up and do this while moving the story forward as well. It just really relaxes the strain on resources both as far as Zenny goes for crafting, and really speeds up your hunter rank gain as well. Third, let's talk about a specific weapon, which is going to be Sword and Shield. In my opinion, Sword and Shield isn't the most fun weapon to play in this game, but it is the most grindable. What I mean by that is Sword and Shield doesn't require you to put yourself in dangerous situations like high value perfect evades, or counters required to really unlock your damage, like something like Longsword. And on top of that, it has really low commitment time to animations, so you can dodge pretty much any attack. What this means is you can safely output the required damage to kill a monster in a more efficient way than most other weapons that have those requirements, which is pretty much just all the other weapons. So if your goal is really to progress as quickly as you can, Sword and Shield is sort of a cheat code of a weapon to just mindlessly carve through the early game monsters with. Talking about cheat codes, the biggest one that you can get is to be in a super dense area like a city center in a larger city, like where you are in real life. If you want to go for a trip specifically to, you know, use the game, make a point of walking towards denser, more populated areas that are near you, especially early on. The biggest thing that will gate your progress early in the game is gathering points. You have to complete a certain number of gathers in pretty much every quest objective, so unless you are actively moving, this will take you ages, which is why I definitely think the most effective way to play this game is, surprise surprise, walking around. I know, who would have guessed? But more effective than that even are areas like city centers. Anything the game considers a landmark will make a static gathering point that you can get loads of resources from that just respawns every few hours, and as you might expect, city center type areas have way more of those than more suburban or even rural locations. So that really does just speed you up if you happen to be there. On top of that, monsters spawn based on population of an area, the actual population density of the area, not the number of hunters that are playing there. So the more densely populated an area is, the more large monsters you will be able to find close together as a result. So if you really want to make a day of it, find somewhere you can travel to like that and just go to town. I mean, literally. Past that, there are other options for significantly increasing your efficiency as far as speed of progression, and these are, well, Parks, grassy fields, 
little tree lines, anywhere the game considers to be like that near you. If you zoom out on your screen when you're looking at your little walking around map, these areas will be lit up. In these zones, you will clearly see that there are more monsters than anywhere in the non-lit zones. This is because the game is trying to be smart in a way. Animals would mostly prefer to stick to nature, of course, so the areas that are near you that it considers to be nature will have a higher large monster spawn rate than the concrete jungle, so to say. Past that, we are getting into some slightly more specific advice, and one big piece that I have for you is hunt small monsters. Do not ignore them. There will be loads of them around the place, and as you continue your journey, you'll probably wind up getting tired of them as they pose no threat, and they aren't really engaging to fight as a result, but you should probably kill them every time you come across one, even regardless of that, because of the way that upgrading your gear works in this game. Small monster materials will be required as a part of the vast majority of upgrades you will ever do, and to properly upgrade a weapon, it can take a hell of a lot of these. So very simply, just don't ignore these monsters when you see them, or you might regret it massively later on. Then we have what are essentially crafting tips, and the first one is to be a bit tactful with your weapon creation. I know it can be tempting to make three sword and shield types from different monsters as you fight these monsters for the first times, but if you know in your gut that sword and shield isn't going to be your main, you should save most of your materials for when you unlock your actual weapon of choice. Past that, there is a bit of a guideline here as far as what weapons are good. Long term, there will be loads of good weapons, they have skills on them that you can lock through upgrading, and we have a lot of upgrading ahead of us too. Early on though, it is a bit more clear cut. You want to use non-elemental weapons until you unlock the ability to make the weapon that you want to use as your main. Whether that means you mess around with stuff until you decide or, or what, save your elemental weapon materials for after you've made that choice, because you'll be living with these weapons for a while. Great Jagras weapons for the most part have water element, which a number of early monsters are weak to. Element, for whatever reason, is actually significantly stronger in this game than it is in mainline Monster Hunter 2, and the result of that is that elemental weapons that are matched well to your target monster will perform extremely well, even with a weapon that you normally wouldn't associate with elements, something that is normally slower hitting. Water element covers a lot of early monsters, then when you finish chapter 4 of the main story, which happens after you do the tutorial section, you will unlock Toby Kadachi, whose weapons have thunder element and cover a lot of the other early monsters too. As you get further in, you will get more elements accessible to use, but water and thunder cover the weaknesses of about half of the roster of the game, and for the sake of it, in case you weren't in the know, as of release there are 13 monsters that are in the game, all the ones shown on this screen right here, with the scale of difficulty going from Great Jagras at the bottom all the way up to Diablos at the top, which isn't bad by any means. Then we have armor skills more specifically to round the rest of this off, and the really, really big one that I would insist you use on any melee weapon is Lock On. This is earliest found on the Kulu helmet when you get it to grade 2, and the tutorial story will eventually give you a quest to unlock this and use it to show it to you, but you can unlock it even earlier than that if you happen to get the materials, and I want to make sure that you're aware that that's an option because this skill is awesome to have as soon as you can. It lets you choose a specific body part, and then from that point forward for the rest of the hunt, all of your attacks will aim there. I find it especially good on Hammer where it can aim things like the final hit of Spinning Bludgeon to connect right with the chin. It's super accurate and extremely helpful for increasing damage output as it constantly lets you hit the hit zone that you're trying to damage, an alternative as well to use this with, and also a very strong way to use it too is if you are hunting for specific parts. When you are crafting equipment, you can look at the required materials to see where they come from, and you can use lock-on to target a specific monster part if you have to break it, which will let you focus on breaking it specifically to get those parts every time you hunt that monster. A really neat tip if you are ever trying to farm specific monster parts. Then finally, I just want to talk quickly about attack boost, which you can get earliest on leather chest overgrade to grade 2. This skill in this game is still really good. 20 raw per rank is actually really solid on early weapons, but none of this is a multiplier like attack boost is in the main series at higher ranks, and that means that attack boost as a skill is really valuable early on, but as you get proper gear with better skills on it, it will likely be overtaken quite quickly, so don't, you know, rely on this forever. Aside from that, the best tip that I can give you is just practice. The dodge timing in this game is pretty forgiving, and if you perfect dodge every attack that comes at you, you are literally invulnerable in this game. You are immortal and will kill things faster than the vast majority of other hunters will, no matter what else you do on the hunt because of the damage and efficiency that that perfect dodge gives you. Not to mention that if you really want to speed progress the game, you will actually really need to get good at dodging. If you want to do multiple large monster hunts in a row, your only hope is to either dodge the vast majority of incoming attacks or to use healing. And with healing being as limited as it is within this game, you can only do that so much before it becomes a problem and you just sort of have to start waiting. And that's it really, basically just a guide for specifically how to progress and advance as quickly and effectively as you can through the earlier stages of Monster Hunter Now. Some general tips for increasing your power early on through gameplay practices, some efficiency and tips for getting through the story and hunter rank faster too, and even some tips for zenny and part farming, as those can be a real bottleneck at pretty much any 
point in the game, honestly. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it both helps you on your continued journey and helps you enjoy the journey even more with Monster Hunter Now. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye